On the subject of family history, it really started for me in the 1990s when I became director of a large project called the Canadian Families Project. It was a research project uh, involving scholars at five universities in Canada. It was a big team project. And we started with a source. Uh, we were very source driven in what we were doing. We took the 1901 Census of Canada, uh, the original uh, census returns, the enumerators, uh, handwritten uh, information on individuals, uh, the entire population of Canada, 5.3 million people were enumerated in the census of 1901. And we created uh, a randomized computer database of all of that information so that we could study and make statements about uh, family in Canada, what it looked like at the turn of the, uh, the beginning of the 20th century, and we discovered a lot of things about family that were not known before. Among the many things we discovered about family is that there was no single family form or structure. Canadians in the 1990s were often talking about a so-called traditional family, and they were imagining that family in the distant past resembled the family very much of the, the idealized family of the 1950s. The family consisting of uh, a heterosexual married couple and their biological offspring, and that was it, and that's the way family always was. Well, we were among those historians, and there are many elsewhere, who were rediscovering family uh, a century ago, and in previous times, and finding out that family was much more complex than that uh, somewhat romanticized image would suggest. Family, in fact, had many different forms. Single parent families, for instance, were very common uh, in 1901, just as they are today. Uh, there were, um, you know, uh, couples, married couples, who were not heterosexual. Uh, there was divorce, there was separation of couples. Legal divorce in Canada in 1901 was very difficult to get, but that doesn't mean that married couples did not separate. They did, and there were, in fact, many more than the official figures suggested. So there were many, many discoveries that came out of that project. The Canadian Families Project was merely one effort among many in Canada and elsewhere in the United States and Europe to try to use census data, what we call microdata, that's the individual level information, all of the information about individuals, your name, your age, your marital status, your place of birth, uh, what was your occupation, and in Canada, what was your religion, and what was your annual earnings, and uh, you know, a whole range of information. Very, very powerful source for historians. But we were just one of many groups that was using census data to try to study national populations, households, families, other characteristics, and other uh, changes. Everything from social class to gender to religion, ethnicity, uh, economic change, social change. Um, the census is an indispensable source for so many important questions. Um, and Canada, in fact, was somewhat behind the United States because the Americans are way, way ahead in their use of their historical uh, censuses. And it's one of the enormous advantages of the computer for historians. The computer allowed us to take samples and sometimes entire populations and study them in an entirely new way. Um, the census is a very important historical source. Uh, in recent years, of course, there's been a lot of debate and concern about the census in Canada, um, and particularly with the ending of the uh, long-form census, the mandatory long-form census in 2011, and its replacement with the voluntary household survey. The concern is that both for scholars in the present and in the distant future, for historians in the distant future, our knowledge of Canada and the Canadian people will uh, be seriously weakened and impaired because um, there are certain uh, problems with the voluntary household survey. Uh, for many communities and many groups of Canadians, that household survey is not uh, representative. It doesn't present a statistically valid portrait of certain communities uh, and 
uh, peoples within the Canadian population as a whole. So the census remains absolutely vital, not f just for uh, policy making and intelligent, informed policy making in the present, but it's also vital for our understanding of Canadian history.